This is Maxwell Air Force Base, headquarters and nerve center of the Air University. From here, the Air University conducts and controls professional military education of Air Force officers. So vital is this function that the university constitutes a major command of the United States Air Force. At the Air University, officers are provided with the expertness in the profession of arms so necessary in today's space age. Here, allied officers come from over 62 different nations of the free world to study and share professional knowledge with our Air Force. A good part of their curriculum is devoted to the customs and heritage of these United States of America. First-hand knowledge is offered these Allied officers through visits to the Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs, Colorado, the Space Center at Cape Kennedy, Florida, and our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. On one such trip, these Allied officers visited the historic area of Jamestown, Williamsburg, and Yorktown, Virginia, a region that had much to do with the shaping of our nation's past that forms the present. The Coast Guard, one of our oldest armed services, along with the Air Force, the youngest, invites groups of Allied officers to tour this historic area. These officers are learning about the birthplace of our culture, and this is a most vital part of their visit. The people of Virginia are proud of these replicas of sailing ships that brought the founding fathers to these shores. The first breath is a long forgotten event in anyone's life. It is remembered only in birthdays celebrated once each year. A nation is like an individual. It too loses some insight into its early history. Ours is a nation formed by many lands, a culture carved from a wilderness of an unexplored country, carved by brave men in small ships. It was they who took the first English step in the new world, Jamestown. Though other nations were already well established, England's first permanent settlement was Jamestown, founded in 1607. Our friends can see where the early Virginians lived and the way they protected themselves from the unknown. Disease, famine, and loneliness plagued the settlers. But the survivors stayed to build the foundation of our nation. Although it was the capital of Virginia for 92 years, Jamestown failed. An inadequate harbor and poor land caused most of its citizens to move inland about six miles and start a community called Middle Plantation, which later became Williamsburg, named after King William of England. In 1699, Williamsburg became the capital of Virginia and remained so for almost 80 years, while Jamestown remained only as a trading center and a port of commerce. Williamsburg became, like other colonial cities, self-sufficient. Its many craftsmen and artisans fashioned some of the finest wares in America. The ancient craft of paper making was brought to this country by the early colonists. Today, this skill is still practiced in its original form by the craftsmen of Williamsburg. The Declaration of Independence and many other important documents relating to our history were made on this paper and are still well preserved. The citizens of Williamsburg demonstrate other colonial crafts in shops throughout the city. Our allied visitors observed the craftsmen at work in authentic surroundings. 
the wig maker's skill was much in demand, thus making him an integral part of the community. Individualism and personal initiative became foremost. The city boomed with excitement. Courts and assembly were in session twice a year. They made laws to protect themselves, tried offenders, and a jail was built. Meanwhile, heavier taxes and embargoes were levied upon the colonists by Britain and taxation without representation became a fighting slogan of the colonists. In protest against the British Crown, the Virginia Convention, held in June 1776, adopted the Virginia Declaration of Rights that became a model for our Declaration of Independence. Cannon and powder were scarce. Our allied friends observed the weapons the Americans used to repel the British Crown. Tempers flared. The fight for freedom began. All the colonies banded together for the fight. It was the irony of history that, by coincidence, the British were finally defeated only 20 miles from where Englishmen first settled 170 years earlier. Victory came about only with the help of our first allies. The French Navy sealed off the British fleet in the York River. And the American Army, along with the French, moved in by land, isolating the Redcoats at Yorktown. Cornwallis, the British general, had no choice but to seek a truce. And on the morning of October 17, 1781, he asked for a parley. The treaty was drawn up on the 19th at the Moore House, which stood less than a mile from the battlefield. General Washington, along with the German von Steuben and the Frenchman Rochambeau, were victorious. So ended the siege of Yorktown. So ended the American Revolution. After the war, Williamsburg was left behind by the march of civilization, as was Jamestown nearly a century earlier. But as a historical landmark, it has been restored so that we and our friends can see today life as it was over 200 years ago. where the Burgesses of Virginia met, a cordial welcome was extended by the mayor of Williamsburg. Our hostess explains the historical background of the colonial assembly. The mace, symbol of the crown's control, it was in this room that its right to govern was challenged. These walls framed many moments of our history. Jefferson, Washington, and Patrick Henry sat in these very seats. This restored chapel still stands on the shores of the James River, where it was built more than 300 years ago perhaps in eulogy to the settlers' search for religious freedom, a search that founded a new way of life. It 
in the governor's garden, the Allies can sense the beauty and serenity of America, a peaceful country blessed with the color of many lands. The American people had two purposes in restoring Williamsburg to its way of life in the 18th century. One purpose was to simply preserve the area for historical reasons. But more important, it was to recall for future generations the basic principles of American self-government and individual liberty. The Allies were hosted by the U.S. Air Force and Coast Guard at a reception held in their honor at Yorktown, affording them an opportunity to meet members of the local community. The warm hospitality shown our friends was reminiscent of colonial Virginia. These Allied officers have just been given a glimpse of early America, a glimpse into our history, a glimpse that will help us to understand each other in a more complete way. Allies today, more than ever, play a major role in our world affairs. Many of the nations from which these visiting officers come are far older than ours. In the past, they have contributed directly to our culture, so directly, in fact, that their heritage is now partly ours. Our allies leave the Air University of the United States Air Force, having broadened their professional and educational skills and achieved a mutual understanding with our armed services. We have much in common, not only in the history we have shared, but in the history we are sharing. These Allied officers bring to us today a renewed friendship and a refreshing dedication to liberty for our new world.